Oi, os meus amigos. Eletricidade, hein? Sempre me fascina. And this is a little more on my dual circuit that I've combined, um, that I'll call the oscillifier. And I call it that because it, it's an oscillating circuit. And the effect it has on this end is it, it's a magnifier of light and the oscillifier. And so the circuit is a dual thief circuit at this end that I can't really call a dual thief anymore because the lead light here is the thief. It steals the jewels from the power source. But I've, I've got rid of that lead. I've arrested the lead and replaced it with a trusty 1N4004 diode. And so there's no more stealing of jewels. It's just passing them straight on into this um, 22 farad 2.5 volt supercapacitor. My power source today is a homemade graphite magnesium ribbon cell and it's starting to deplete now. It's been running for over a week and it's a water cell and I, I think because the graphite's water soluble it's starting to leach through the first layer of treated leather here and compromising the output. So I won't know until I unwrap this and investigate what's going on there. It's a two inch bifilar wound toroid you can see the A1 and B2 joined together to go down to the anode of the power source. Transistor is a 2N2222. There's a 1K ohm resistor coming off the base. And so the power source runs through here. It's amplified through the um, toroid. And this is feeding into the um, supercapacitor. That's being used to run the second half of the circuit. And I got this circuit and modified it. I got it from Lid Motor, and um, he's got hundreds of videos. One of them is a Bob and Bedini video, and, and the circuit should be on there. I've um, modified it slightly. I've eliminated this variable resistor. That was a 10K potentiometer and a 100 ohm resistor coming off that. And I've eliminated those and replaced it with just a 1K resistor coming off the base of a 2N2222 transistor. There's a 1N4001 diode going from emitter to base. Um, I'm a visual creature, so I prefer you know, visual diagrams like this. But if anybody wants a schematic, I can probably knock one up for them. Now, the magnifier of light is at this point here, and I've... I've two LEDs in here because one was just too bright and I was blowing LEDs. Um, I could probably have just upped the resistance but I just put two LEDs in instead. I've breadboarded the second half of the circuit which is uh, just so I can play around. I've got two LEDs in there. This is the Jewel Thief half. If I zoom in you can see there I've um, replaced the LED with a little diode. And I'll set this up so you can see it's um, a pulse motor and it's going to be running my little magnet. I've put a little hematite sphere on the outside of the magnet, which seems to stabilize it as it's spinning. And that'll have something to do with rotational progression. I don't really understand the rotational forces. When the lead starts to pulse, you'll know that the, um, the magnet is being driven. Oops, might help if I... <laughs> what an idiot. You see a flash there in the LEDs. It's me connecting the capacitor. And so there, the LEDs are pulsing. They start to increase as the rotational velocity increases on this magnet. And they are still pulsing, just at such a high frequency that they appear to be fully on. And so that's the um, pulse motor being run. Now this really amazes me, this circuit, it fascinates me. As the coil collapses, it's, it's bringing in a, uh, a radiant spike. And the radiant energy, I think that, that term was coined by Tesla. One of his friends was studying incandescent materials. And um, Tesla noticed that this incandescent particles, much like the sun gives off, have um, mass, these particles have mass, they're infinitesimally small but they do have mass and they can affect other mass. And he noticed when 
when he was playing around that these particles passed through a glass tube and didn't affect the vacuum inside. And so it, they radiated straight through. He called, so he termed um, that radiant energy. Now as this coil uh, magnet passes by the coil, it produces a current in the coil. That current has a magnetic field at right angles, which produces current in the next strand of coil, and on and on and on. And there's also a back EMF opposing the direction of the current. And so in a way, this coil is fighting itself to charge up. And so it takes a certain amount of time to charge up. Once the magnet passes the coil, the transistor switches, the circuit opens, and the coil collapses. And it collapses much, much faster than it takes to charge up, you know, about a fifth of the time. And so there's a type of time compression there. And to fill that, that time void, um, it sucks in radiant energy. This is, as I understand it, some, feel free to point me out if I'm wrong. I don't fully understand this. This is, um, I'm still in the learning stages of this radiant, this radiant spike. And I can get this system to go into self-oscillation. Um, oh, stay on. I've just got to touch three, um, three parts of that circuit. And it's now self-oscillating. I'll just darken down a bit so you can see the brightness of this. I was, I was really impressed. I've got two LEDs in there. Um, and you can see the reflection on my hand there. It's giving off a lot of light. Okay, for, for just one homemade graphite, graphite um, magnesium ribbon cell, it's giving off a hell of a lot of light. And that's what I was really really interested in and um, it uses very very little energy you know this this will run for days and days so I plan to just leave this self oscillating and see how long it will last at that brightness and that was what really interested me so that's the magnifying part 